Hey everybody, Tim Krause. I just wanted to kind of bring this to your attention today. This this is going to be incredibly video intent. We're just going to take very small clips of uh, videos and show them to you in sort of a montage. Uh, this is going to be called What is Your Absolute? Now we're going to use the same methodology that we always use. Isaiah 28.10 For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little. We're also going to use 2 Corinthians 13, 1. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. You're going to see today 36 different video clips that talk about who message ministers really revere over scripture. We're going to show you who the absolute is uh, from, from 36 different message ministers clips. Many of them the same ministers, but we're going to show those clips to you. It certainly is more than two or three uh, uh, message ministers. Uh, among them, by the way, the last seven or so are going to be some of my favorite ministers given some of my favorite clips. They're just, you'll see what I mean when we watch the video. The question that we want to approach today is what is your absolute? And, and we're going to take a little bit of a special approach. We're going to show you exactly who message ministers tell us their absolute is. Now, do message ministers teach scripture? Or do they prefer William Branham and his sermon over scripture? Here are the first three videos, not included in the 36 bonus videos. We're going to have message ministers tell us that the truth comes from scripture. They don't follow a man. And that if it weren't in the word, they'd be gone. That's Barry Coffey, David Seiler, and Paul Halet. And they're going to tell you that they do not follow uh, a man, that they actually follow scripture. So let's take a look at those three. And then we'll, we'll come back and talk for just a real quick second. Here we go. Truth can fix things that, that men can't. It's that atmosphere of spirit and truth that, that, God is, that God is looking for us to not only create, but to embrace and say, Lord, and you should pray this every time you come to church. Lord, bring the truth and let the truth penetrate into my heart. Let the truth penetrate through my understanding of things. Amen. Isn't that what they say today? Why they're saying that you and I are following a man. Amen. Hey, listen, friends. Everybody's always followed something, right? But we're not even following a man. Something down inside of you that you look into the Word because if we couldn't find it in the Word, we'd be gone. All right, so there we have Barry Coffey, David Seiler, and Paul Halet telling us that, uh, gosh, it has to be in Scripture. They don't follow a man. Absolute, it's the scriptural truth. That's what they follow. Is that true? I'm going to show you 36 videos. I'm going to put the lists up as we're watching the video so that you can see who it is that's speaking. Also, down in the description, you will see all of the videos linked to our uh, our uh, Google Drive so that you can, you can see that we didn't take anything out of context. Uh, all 39 now videos of in the end, the study notes will be available for you in the Google Drive. Here are 36 back-to-back -back videos for message ministers, more or less in alphabetical order. I did take some out of sequence so that I could show you they were my favorites of all of the ones that I, uh, that I picked. So here we go. Here's 36 videos for message ministers who will tell you exactly who their absolute is or what their absolute is. Here we go, and then we'll come back for some conclusions. And without this message, we are a helpless, hopeless, denominational, religious bunch of people without a direction to go, without a vision for the future, without a hope for tomorrow. But because the mighty angel has descended into this generation by the opening of the word, we are in divine position tonight. Amen. Not to go into another age, not to go into another day, but to go into the future home. Amen. I'll tell you what I believe. I believe any church that ain't preaching this message is dead. Well, why don't we do all the law? Because he that's guilty of one point in, in, in infringing the law, he's guilty of all. So therefore, we, why don't we go back and live as Jews and do everything that's required in the law? That's what he's asking them. We're either, we're either Jews or we're not. We're either under Jewish law or we're not. We're either now in the message or we're not. In other words, you're going to wind up one day in, at the gate and God's going to say, but didn't you really believe that this was of God? 
Didn't you believe that this end time message was really of God? You got to answer that question. There's only one people upon this earth that have possession of eternal life, and that's the bride alone. This message, this message, which is this Bible, made known in this day, the promise of the day, ought to be your absolute. And so discrepancy is a deviation because I believe the way God interpreted his, these words and put them and interpreted the scripture, we have no right to add to or take away what that prophet said about it. Or put your interpretation or your opinion to it. To do so, if you're not careful, you better watch out because your name can be easily removed. Amen. So you must take word by word. Don't you put your thought to it. God sending this mighty prophet to the Gentile church. According to scripture, he was to come just before the consummation of the ages, right before the bride goes home. And 2,000 years, 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, John saw this prophet from the future. Met him. Talked to him. Kept trying to worship him. You, being a human, you're human, right? When in Genesis, when God made man, he breathed into him the breath of life, and he became a living soul. In the Hebrew, that means he became praying dirt. You understand? Because the human animal, the human animal was built to pray. He's the only one who does. He's the only animal that prays. No other animal prays. Only the human. Uh, Your close mammals, they don't. None of them. Primates, they don't pray at all. They have no sense of spirituality. Only the human because he's built in the image of God. So if you don't even have a worship life and a prayer life and you're not in connection with your maker, then are you a human? Say, well, I think I am. Well, not according to the Bible. According to the Bible, you're just a beast. He said, we are like a chain dangling over hell. And a chain is as strong as its weakest link. And if you disbelieve one word, that is the thing that separates you from heaven and hell, believing or disbelieving one word. That's pretty straight. It's our headship. Vindicate a word. Vindicate a word. Why do you say vindicate a word all the time? Because it's vindicated. Yeah. That puts away all unbelief. Yes. Don't talk to me about the discrepancies in the message. Don't talk to me about he missed it here or he missed it there. I, my ears are not your garbage can. And he may have spent years and years just trying to find that weak spot. And her weak spot was getting away from headship. That's why I believe this message is headship. Not to be tinkered with, not to be debated, not to be argued with, not to say, well, this says here and this says here. Hogwash. Don't have time for it. I don't care how many spirits say we've outgrown the prophet. I'll stick with this message. I don't care how many people try to say that this message ain't our absolute. I'll stick with the message. It's a vindicated word for a bride that is being purged to follow the headship of the word. Without this message, we wouldn't know what the word says. Without the message, we're still in confusion. Without the message, we're still in this influence and that influence and this influence. But this bride is under the influence of the leadership of the word. Church. Oh, they shout, they speak in tongues, they dance in the spirits, but yet they've not been burst by the message of the hour. Oh, they didn't believe in baptizing in Jesus' name, but they have not taken on the word of the age. They have not been washed in Malachi for message to be presented to Jesus Christ. I was chatting to a brother a while back, and he said, he was speaking about the Reformation age. And he said, how when the Reformation age struck, 
they would only say what's written in the Bible. Anything outside of that, they wouldn't say. So this brother said to me, well, that's why I won't say anything that's not in the Bible when the prophet says it over my pulpit. And something just struck a chord in me and it didn't feel right. It didn't feel right because we cannot judge a prophet. He begins to delve in the realms of the unwritten word. The mystery portion and begins to capture and bring to the elected seed the mind of Christ. So whether you see it in scripture or not, it's not up to us to judge it. Prophet said it. We believe. Masses came and everybody just packed the stadiums to see him. And they wanted him at their church and their pulpit and to see the miraculous happen. But oh, how amazing it changes when, when Elijah comes to his actual ministry. And now Brother Branham comes to Tucson and he says, I didn't want to start a church here. I came here and I came in the desert. I didn't, I didn't want to start it on my own. I didn't want to break any fellowship. I didn't want to break anything up. But I sat here in the desert for three years and you never had me preach. You never invited me to your pulpits and you, you never had me. I, this wasn't my desire to start an assembly. But what happens, doors begin to close at the latter part of his ministry. And what was once widely rejected is now, what was once widely accepted is now rejected by the masses. And so much that Jesus, even in his own ministry, would have the same type of rejection and would say to the, to the, to the crowds that followed him, unless you eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man, you'll have no part with him. And they said, this is a hard saying. This is a hard saying. Let me tell you something, friends. To the world, if you're not a believer ordained from the foundation of the world, the message is a hard thing. It's Oh, but you don't need to quote the prophet anymore, brother. Matt, there's no need. We've moved beyond. Don't you realize there's always a spirit trying to move past the prophet? Let me say this. You can't move past the prophet. You might turn me off on YouTube and you might shut me down in here, but my voice is going to echo out as clear. You cannot go past the prophet. That blunt. Where do I stand in the message? Because this message, my brother and sister, you know, I'm, I've just gave up trying to make the point this message is Jesus Christ. You know, understand, please understand, the message we believe is Jesus Christ. I'm here to say tonight, this message is Jesus Christ, period. Yeah. This is not about dates. This is not about us saying, well, this happened on this date and this happened on that date to be able to create some kind of a profile. But my brother and sister, I believe, as our brother Steve Brisson once said, he said, you know, I'm not going to even read quotes to you. Uh, he said, because if you are a message believer, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I believe that we should have that kind of expectation, as it were, that we should dig in to the Word of God and dig into the message that it is not something foreign to us, but it is common. It's on the, in the tip of our tongue. It's at our fingertips. It is our very life. What about the, the, the animal, the horse that was wild and Brother Biscoll is standing there and they begin to, he begins to explain that he's going to kill somebody. He's going to kill somebody and Brother Branham just, he said all of a sudden that horse just settled down and it became completely calm and he said, I looked out of the corner of my eye and he said, I saw Brother Branham putting his hat back on and he said, I realized that he could control nature. David knew his position. He had been anointed. I wish I was. You have. Amen. Come on, church. A prophet anointed you as much as... An, come on. You know that. As much as anointed David. You've been anointed by message in this last day. The Laodicean age in this last day to sit with him on his throne. prophet of God even made it even more real. He said, we are like a chain dangling over hell. And a chain is as strong as its weakest link. Yes. And if you disbelieve one word, one word, that is the thing that separates you from heaven and hell, Amen. believing or disbelieving one word.
without that, we would all be deceived. We would all be deceived. We would all, amen, be carried about with every wind of doctrine. We would all be under, under the, uh, the wooing spirits uh, of these slicksters uh, that are trying to woo us one way or the other. And one way, one minute we're believing this, and one minute we're believing this, and one minute we're under the influence of this preacher, and then we're under the influence of this preacher. But I'm so thankful God said it will not deceive my elect because I have predestinated her to stand for the truth, to discern those spirits and to be an invisible army in the last days. That's why he sent Malachi for. That's why he sent a vindicated word that you would get away from all of the other slitsters and just say what a prophet said. Brother Branham would be driving down the highway going through curves of West Virginia and he would always keep a note pocket out. A little, how many remember those little flip notepads? Brother Branham always kept a pencil or a pen with a notepad in it. And so when God would give him a thought, he'd be driving and he'd take his hands off of the, off of the wheel and he would start writing down sermons. Brother Andrew just said in the, in the office last night, he said, and even Brother Branham, when he would run out of paper, would pull the tag off of his shirt and write down sermons on the tag of that shirt, and that wheel would just take them perfect. God created GPS, driving cars, way, way before Elon Musk. But if that's what I got to do, when I step in them gates that day and I grab a hold of Carol and we walk through there, I want to look back through there and see you all coming right behind me. I want to see you all standing right there and say, we're trusting Brother Donnie. We're trusting you preach what that prophet said. I want to stand there and present it there and he'll say, I preach what Paul said. And Paul will say, I preach what Jesus said. And he'll say, come on in, family of God. Come on in, family of God. Look at what I've made for you. It's on some of you fathers. And if you make a wrong decision, it might affect your wife, you, two, three kids, whatever more. But can you imagine multiplying that by thousands and then multiplied by millions? The pressure that prophet of God must have felt. Oh, I can't wait till I get to see him that day. When I woke up there and praise the Lord. Oh, happy day, happy day. When the saints of God of this age will walk up before the prophet of God and we will get in our discreet order and stand behind him as the messenger of the age as he presents us to Jesus Christ. Well, you're following a man. Well, who are you following? And where is he taking you? I want to say this to you. Every scoffer, every skeptic, They asked for judgment. They laughed at grace. They laughed at the message. It wasn't God's fault. He gave them a chance to repent. I'm going to bring it and make it real to you. Can you imagine your video that you posted on YouTube against the message of the hour and now people are leaving the earth and you're left with your work. You sent yourself to hell. Don't blame it on me. Don't blame it on Homer Frazier. Don't blame it on William Branham. Don't blame it on Jesus Christ. You sent yourself to hell. Okay. Sorry for that. if that triggered anybody. I tried to give you enough advance notice, but boy, I'll tell you, that's just an amazing montage to me. Um, here are my conclusions out of this whole thing, okay? You can tell us it isn't so all you want to, but you really do worship William Branham above the Holy Scriptures. I just showed you 36 examples where that was true. Doesn't matter what Scripture tells us, that, you, that, the, that group of... Video extracts shows us exactly who you choose to worship. 
We listen to Ron Spencer's and tell us that others tell us that we're going to hell. We know the truth. We know that that's absolutely not true. We preach the one true gospel of Jesus Christ, with no human intercessor, with no prophet in the way. And and Ron, you know, Scripture exhorts us to make sure that we question what we hear to make sure it is of God. You won't allow us the opportunity to speak directly to you or speak directly with you to your assembly. So we take the opportunity to do videos uh, that are that people can take a look at at their convenience. And we also know and believing and following the Holy Scripture is the only way to salvation. William Branham can't save you. The West message of William Branham is not salvation. Uh, we had somebody tell us the other day that we should go hung ourselves because Judas hung himself. Grammatically correct, Judas hanged himself and he was suggesting we should hang ourselves. But he used the word hung. Anyway, what a Christian attitude. And I'm sure we're going to get lots of the videos from people in those assemblies from the ministers that we showed today. But guys, we need to take this stuff seriously. We need to understand who our absolute is. Jesus Christ is all sufficient. Holy Scripture is our absolute. And as Paul tells us in his letter to Timothy, only what is written. At best, William Branham's message is extra scriptural, and at worst, it's anti scriptural. So you can tell us all you want, again, tell us all you want that, that you that holy scripture is your absolute. I think that those uh clips that we showed tell us just the opposite or give us an entirely different picture. Listen, I appreciate everybody. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Hope it didn't trigger anybody too badly. Hope you enjoyed it. I thought some of them were pretty funny. Uh, leave some comments down in the in the comments below. We'll try to get back to you as quickly as we can. God bless everybody. Hope you guys are having a great 2023. We look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.